All right, it is that time. We are going to start looking at actual programming. We're going to start learning the programming instructions, and we're going to start learning how to create ladder logic. So in this first example, I'm using three different instructions, and these are three instructions that you will find in virtually every single PLC programming system in existence in the world today. And these are the most basic instructions in PLC programming. This first one that looks like an open set of contact, uh, contacts, if we look at the instruction type, it's called XIC. And XIC stands for examine if closed. What that means is, imagine this is connected to an input, like as I have uh, labeled here, a light switch. And that light switch, if you understand how a switch works, a switch is either open or it's closed. It's either an open circuit or it's a closed circuit. And think of these contacts as representing that switch. Right now, it looks like those contacts are apart which means open. So it's not going to do anything. You notice if we're looking for a path to the right, we don't have a path unless this closes. So what happens when we close our light switch? Then we have potential coming across our rung, and what do we do? Well, obviously our light bulb is going to come on, what kind of instruction do we have? When we look at this instruction type, it's called an OTE instruction. And what OTE represents, I can't really say it stands for, because it's certainly not a proper acronym, but it stands for Output Energize. So this is going to energize an output. What that really means is it's going to take some bit somewhere within our data files and it's going to set that bit to 1 and it's going to keep that bit as a value of 1 as long as this condition is true, meaning as long as the switch is closed. If you look between these two instructions, you'll notice they have very similar addresses. This one is addressed B3 colon 0 slash 0. This one is addressed B3 colon 0 slash 2. Now, ironically, I could actually reverse those two bit addresses, and it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Because when you open the data file, and this one right now, it only has one word and it has all 16 bits but I can just as easily modify that table and let's go ahead and give it 20 elements so it looks a little more healthy when we open it up. In the program, in this data file, none of these bits really mean anything to the PLC. When I click on B378, it has no symbol, it has no description, it's meaningless to the PLC. It's just a bit somewhere in a data table. It's completely irrelevant. The only reason B300 is important is because I've described it. I've given it a description and I've used it in the program. And because I'm using it, now all of a sudden it matters because the rest of my logic is going to be looking at that address and say, hey, is the light switch open or closed? We know the light switch is connected to B300. So I will tell the program by putting blocks like this in there check B300 to see if it's open or to see if it's closed. And depending, maybe we'll do an instruction to the right, maybe we won't. In this case, if B300 is closed, we want to go ahead and energize an output. 
And of course, we're going to have that address, B302, we're going to have that tied to an output, namely our light bulb. So, granted, you really don't need a PLC to control a light bulb, especially not if the only uh, input that it requires is a, a simple light switch. Obviously, you can bypass the PLC with that circuit, but just for demonstration's sake, we're going to say that there is a real input coming into our PLC from a light switch, and there is a real light bulb attached to an output on our PLC. And when you flip that switch, that light bulb should come on, and you can toggle it back and forth. There's a third instruction that we're going to talk about in this lecture, and if you look at the block, the instruction we're using here, you remember this is called an XIC, examine if closed. Well, we have a block here that looks very similar, and don't mind the, the green line, that is telling us that it's currently true in the data table. B301 is another address, it's right next door to our light switch, only this one we're calling a car door. And you notice this symbol looks exactly like this symbol, with one exception, it's got this diagonal line through it. And as you remember, this is an XIC, examine if closed. This one is an XIO, examine if open. So these two are really kind of opposites. When it refers to the data file, if this one equals 1, then it's going to say it's true, and it's going to go ahead and, and let it keep going and looking for the right. If there are no more conditions, it'll take this action. If we do have two or three more conditions here, it's going to consider this one true. It's going to move to the next condition to see if it's true, then to the next condition, and if everything's true, then it'll go ahead and execute. But back to these two, this one is going to be considered true only if B3 colon 0 slash 0 is equal to 1. As the opposite, B3 0 1 is going to have to be equal to 0, which means open, which means false. And as counterintuitive as that might seem, under that circumstance, this block is going to be evaluated as true. And in this case, I have a car door, and it's tied to an output over here, the ding, ding, ding sound. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we're examining if opened. So what happens when we open our car door? Well, if we have a car that was built within the last 20 years, when you open the door, the car says, ding, 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 ding. And this is the logic for that kind of circuit right here. Examine if opened. Is the car door open? Yes. Go ahead and make the ding, ding, ding sound. But we don't want to hear it once we close the door. That's what this circuit does. Now, if we wanted to modify this a little bit, and actually, let's just take that out and take that out. So we're not looking at outputs. Now, obviously, this program wouldn't compile and wouldn't execute because we have to have some kind of action on each rung. But we're just going to focus right now on the two conditions, and I'm going to address these as the same thing. So assuming these are both tied to the light switch, stop and think for a minute. If I have an instruction here, an output here, and an output on this rung as well, Will those two outputs ever execute at the same time? And hopefully you've concluded, no, they won't. The reason is, when you look at our two conditions on these two rungs, we are looking at the same address, B300 and B300 again. Here, we're examining it if it's closed, meaning if it's equal to 1. Here, we're examining it only if it's open and equal to zero. Well, we're not talking about quantum mechanics. 
This isn't Schrodinger's bit. In other words, it can't be equal to zero and one at the same time. It can only ever be one or the other. So one of these two rungs will always execute. It'll always be one or the other. It'll never be both, and it can never be neither. It always has to be one or the other because a bit will always be equal to either zero or one and only one of those two values. So those are the first three instructions that any programmer needs to learn. Output energize, examine if closed, and examine if open. And with those three instructions, you'll be able to do so much control and so much programming, it will seriously blow your mind how much you can get away with just using those three things. Now when it comes to energizing an output, and I'm going to go ahead and there's our light bulb. I'm going to go ahead and put that back just to tell you that there are other ways to energize an output, to energize a bit to set a bit equal to one and we're going to cover those in the next lecture but this is the preferred method so anytime you want to change a bit from zero to one you almost always want to use an OTE an output energize block there are other th ways to accomplish that but we're going to discuss a little bit more in the next lecture why you want to stick with OTE instead of OTLs.